Could smart contact lenses grant millions the gift of sight? Welcome to Tech First with John Kutsir. In the tech industry, we tend to think of smart contact lenses sort of like smart glasses. They're kind of the next smartphone, only smaller, maybe less visible, less intrusive, and more wearable. But actually, smart contact lenses might be more useful medically for people with poor vision or eye diseases, and they might be available in just a few years. At Ghent University in Belgium, researchers have just presented an artificial iris embedded in a smart contact lens. To learn more, we're chatting with Andres Vasquez Quintero, a professor at the university. Andres, welcome. Hi, John. Thank you very much for the invitation. Hey, super happy to have you. Tell us, what have you made? Yeah, well, basically, we have made a smart contact lens platform. So this this is a platform that involves different electronic components, and we focus on uh, uh, trying to fix the vision of people. So this uh, need of, uh, of some patients. Uh, and then inside of the lens, we have different components, electronics and liquid crystal models to be able to help these patients. Excellent. What does the smart contact lens do? What have you made it, been able to make it do so far? Just yeah, so in principle, we focus in vision correction. There is other research going on into biosensing and also augmented reality. We would like to be able to change the, the vision of people by using the liquid crystal. And at the moment, one of the applications we have is to be able to control the amount of light that enters the eye. And this is this we can do it electronically with the components. Interesting. Um, so what vision problems can it correct? I'm sorry, I'm not hearing yeah, to you. To start now. with, uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, about the different uh, diseases or disorders that we can help, mostly it's people that have high sensitivity to light. This is called a photophobia as well. Uh, and then we can help these patients to reduce the amount of light that enters into the eye. And then they can then go ahead during their daily life uh, with, a, with a better quality of life. Uh, this type of patients, they can come from different uh, sectors. So you can have ocular problems like aniridia or albinism, but also you can have neurological problems like chronic migraine, uh, traumatic brain injury, dry eye disease, so there are different sectors uh, where you can help with these type of devices. So how's that work? Um, I'm assuming you have a light sensor on the contact lens and the light sensor can see how much light is out there and is adjusting sort of an uh, artificial iris to allow more light or less light in? Yes, that is exactly the, the functionality. So we have embedded inside of the contact lens and photodiodes that can detect the amount of light in the, in the room, in the environment. If you're indoors or if you are out outdoors, it would work in the same way. And then after these sensors, they detect the amount of light. We have a very smart ASIC chip that we developed here in Belgium that is able to control then the amount of rings that we have in the liquid crystal uh, module. And this is going to control the size of the effective pupil and then also going to control the amount of light that enters your eye. And then you have two benefits. First of all, you have less light and second, you have a higher depth of field, so then people can see sharp in a better way. Is is it user configurable? Can the user, can the person who's wearing the contact lens say, I need more light or less light, or is it automatic? Yeah, that is indeed the intention. At the moment in the lab, we have tested different prototypes uh, which react automatically to light. Uh, and the intention is that we can also program the thresholds of light. So basically we can uh, define different parameters for different patients, because as you know, everybody knows that sensitivity to light is very subjective. So this is why ideally we would like to program for different type of patients if you have different disorders, but also for example, if you are indoor or outdoors, you have a different light settings. Right. Right. What What's all the technology that's on board? You mentioned that there's an ASIC on board. There's obviously some functionality for uh, an iris. Um, what other technology is on the smart contact lens? Yes, so the technology is 
divided in three main parts. The first one, as you mentioned, is the ASIC that we developed here in, in, in in-house to be able to have photodiodes and controlling the liquid crystal. The liquid crystal is the second component where we have different rings that we can turn on and off. And the third technology that we use is coming from the MEMS uh, technology. So we use MEMS technology, microelectromechanical systems, uh, which is the same technology that we use nowadays uh, to manufacture all the physical sensors in our phones. So all the accelerometers or gyroscopes, they use MEMS technology and we're using the same technology to develop our smart platform. And then this platform goes embedded inside of the contact lens. Interesting. And you have an onboard battery. Um, what battery technology are you using and how long does the battery last? Yeah, so for the moment, the, the prototypes that we have developed, uh, we have commercial batteries, which are uh, solid state lithium batteries. Uh, of course, they're very small in size, so only a few millimeters of, of area. Um, it's it's a quite a, quite amazing, and we, we make it very thin, of course, so it fits inside of the lens. And then the idea is that uh, with, the, with the design that we have, this battery can last for a full day of operation of this liquid crystal. Interesting. Is the battery see-through or is the battery in the area around the pupil? Yeah, that's also very important. So the electronics we develop with the battery, is they are not see-through. And this is why we place them around the optical zone. So just around the pupil. So in fact, the, the people, so they won't be able to, to see this. So the crystal that which comes in the center part of the contact lens. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Now, I wear contact lenses. I have contact lenses in right now. Uh, I put them in every morning, take them out every, every night. Uh, is it as comfortable as an ordinary contact lens? Is it thicker? Is it more like maybe a hard contact lens like people used to wear and some still do? Yeah, that's a, that's a very important question because our approach is really focused into this aspect. So what we want to do is a platform that goes inside of a conventional contact lens. So we have developed prototypes for soft contact lenses as well as rigid contact lenses. But to, to understand it better is some kind of sandwich that goes really, the, the platform goes inside of the contact lens. So in fact, it's not as comfortable, it, it is not less comfortable than a normal lens, but it's exactly the same because the material in contact with the eye is the same as a contact that you're using today. So that's, that's the approach we want to take. Interesting. So you mentioned AR, augmented reality, and of course that would be a far future um, capability because that's going to require much more onboard intelligence and much more uh, battery, um, compute, all that stuff. Uh, but what, what kinds of things would you like to be able to do with it uh, eventually? Yeah, I, I think in a first step, what's going to happen in the field is that we're going to help patients with a low vision problem with augmented reality, but in very low uh, amount of pixels, you can say. So it's not like we're going to have a, a movie displayed on our contact lens, because as you mentioned, we need more power and more computing power, but we're going to give simple signals uh, for people with low vision. So if you go to go, need to go this way or not, we can have some signals to announce that uh, event to the people. So this okay. is coming in the field, and of course, later on, you will have Very, very good. Sorry, we had some connection issues there, so I had some difficulty hearing that, but I think I got all of it. Um, what are your next steps, and how soon can we see something like this in the market? Yeah, the next steps, we're still uh, validating the prototypes uh, to improve the technology, as well as we're validating this clinically. So it's, it's very important to to point out that the contact lens is a medical device. So it's really contact close with the eye. So we need to prove the safety and the efficacy on a clinical trial. So this is like uh, any other medical device. So the next steps are towards clinical trials. In the next years, we're going to start and people on the field are going to start with clinical trials to validate the comfort, safety and efficacy of the devices. Excellent. When will those medical trials start? Sorry, I can't hear so, anything they're saying. Go ahead again. 
The clinical trials uh, for the preliminary tests, they have started already here okay. at the university. Uh, these are some preliminary prototypes to be able to analyze the first aspects of the concept. And then the clinical trials with the active device that will happen later in time. Uh, we expect that in the next uh, three to five years, the trials will be initialized and finalized with the, with the results. Okay. Okay. Very good. If you project out maybe a little farther beyond that, um, and you've got working uh, contact lenses out in the market helping people, and you're working on the next generation beyond that, uh, what's that look like to you? What kind of capabilities are you thinking about for that? Yeah, I think besides what we just mentioned, of vision correction and augmented reality, the, the sensing field is coming very strongly. And that means the fact that you can sense uh, uh, clinically what you have in the tear fluid. So you can integrate different sensors in a contact lens platform, and then you're able to give the patient some kind of feedback about uh, what's really in, uh, in, in the body, because whatever you can measure in the tear fluid, you can also measure in, in blood. So in fact, uh, that's, that's very interesting, but of course for that you need specialized sensors, you need more power, and then a way to communicate the data out from the contact lens. Interesting. So you're going to put medical technology on the contact lens, sense the tears, um, and 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 learn things about somebody's health or wellness based on that. Uh, and to do so, you're going to need to put a little radio, Bluetooth radio or something like that, in the contact lens. Uh, it is an interesting world we're moving into. Well, Andres, I want to thank you so much for joining us on Tech First. Uh, thank you for coming on. Thank you very much for the invitation, and I hope everything was uh, was very clear. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. For everybody else, hey, thank you for joining us on Tech First as well. My name is John Kutzier. I appreciate you being along for the show. You'll be able to get a full transcript of this podcast in about a week at johnkutzier.com. And of course, the story at Forbes will come out shortly thereafter. Plus, the full video will be available on my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. Maybe share with a friend. Until next time, this is John Kutzier with Tech First. Tech First.